Hello. <laughs> Holy moly, there's 482 people in here. Let me just say a quick hello to all of you. I'm going to mention everybody's name. No, I won't, because that's impossible. The chat's going crazy. I can see John, Marielle, Silveria, Stephen, Anam, Gulam, Gurpreet, Shruti, Mary, Jaya. Oh my God, there's a lot of people here. Hey, it's very good to see you all. This is terrific. Um, Okay, this is the first time we're doing a live IELTS speaking where I'm actually going to ask you to participate in this one and actually do some IELTS speaking part one, some speaking part two, and some speaking part three. Uh, I'm actually going to give you a little bit of feedback, but because we have so many people in here, it's just hit 500 people. Obviously, I cannot choose everybody. So I might actually just choose randomly and hopefully you'll be be one of the people who are chosen. If not, you can always go and check out e2language.com and do the tutorials and the live classes there, okay? Cool. All right, so what are we gonna do? Let me just bring up my presentation and then we'll get started. Cool, just sharing my screen. Okay, rock and roll, I think that's all working. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Jay. I'm one of the expert IELTS teachers here at E2 Language. Thank you very much for coming along. In today's lesson, we're going to look at IELTS speaking, which you probably know about. More specifically, in this class, I'm going to give you an overview of IELTS speaking if you are unfamiliar with it. We're going to look at part one, but not before we firstly look at some methods to help you maximize your scores in part one. In fact, we're going to look at E2 methods for all of the different IELTS speaking parts because they're extremely helpful and they hone in on the criteria or the scoring. And for each of these speaking parts, one, two, and three, as I mentioned, we'll do an open mic and I'll get you to actually speak and I'll give you a bit of feedback. I've got some uh, something for me to write down on here. Then at the end, we'll do a little Q&A. The class should go for about an hour. Okay, so if you are unfamiliar with IELTS speaking, let me just go through this quite quickly. The whole thing goes for about 11 to 14 minutes. And because you'll be crazy nervous and it's all kind of strange, it goes very quickly indeed. As mentioned, there are three parts. It's done one-on-one -on -one with an examiner. It might be done online via Zoom or it might be done face-to-face. -face. It depends where you are in the world. Part one, we call small talk. We'll look at that in more depth. Part two is the two minute monologue. That's a tricky part. And part three is a discussion. Each part goes for about three to five minutes. Now, importantly, this is how you're scored on test day. And this is what it's all about, okay? So you're scored on, well, it says here four things, but you're scored more, on more things than that. You're scored on fluency, which is one thing, coherence, which is another, vocabulary range, that is how broad your vocabulary is, uh, vocabulary precision or accuracy, grammatical range, that is how vast your grammar is, as well as grammatical accuracy, and of course, you're scored on pronunciation. Now, all of these things are really quite complicated, and there's lots of little parts that go into these. Like pronunciation, for example, is a what can I say? It has many different ingredients. Okay, this is what the examiner, let's pretend I'm the examiner today. This is what I'll be looking at while you're doing your speaking. I'm looking at this weird table here of band descriptors. And you can see here band nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero means you didn't go to the exam. And you can see here the different criteria that I just mentioned. The examiner is going to give you a score out of nine for each of the criteria. And then the examiner will find an average and that will become your speaking score. Let's think about the scoring in more depth before we get started, because you need to be keeping this in mind while you're doing your speaking. Fluency and coherence means you speak with not without effort, with little effort. Everybody has to strain when they're speaking to find the vocabulary and the grammar, etc. But hopefully you're not exerting too much effort to find that vocab and grammar. 
Coherence means you're using connected, uh, sorry, connecting words throughout your speech. So it runs in a logical way. And you're also developing your topics fully with reasons and examples and contrasts, et cetera. This is part of the methods that we'll look at. Vocabulary, you need to be precise. That is the word that you use that you use must make sense. You need to be flexible because you need to describe a number of different things. If you can, you should use some less common topical vocabulary. For example, later on, we're going to look at the topic of education. Maybe you'll mention words like tertiary education or postgraduate degree, something like this. So if you can throw in specific, less common topical words, that will help you a lot. Paraphrasing, we'll talk about because I'm going to ask you questions and you'll need to transform those questions into answers. Grammar, of course, I mentioned needs to be broad and precise or error-free. Pronunciation means the sounds that you're making are all clear. You're using good emphasis and stress. You're not speaking like a robot or you're not being monotone. Uh, you're using connected speech and intonation. All of this stuff, um, I'm sure we've got videos on the YouTube channel about this, or you can check out the platform e2language.com, or you can check out E2 School for the pronunciation course, which I'll mention later on. Okay, imagine that it's test day. There's a waiting room. And I've done this test five times, so I know what actually happens here. So you'll be waiting there nervously thinking, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's totally fine to be nervous. Your hands will sweat, your heart will beat. That's just the nature of the game. The examiner will then read out your name, okay? And you'll stand up and you'll walk down a hallway or somewhere into a classroom or into a small room with the examiner. Along the way, you can do a little bit of small talk if you like. Me personally, I like to just stay quiet until the examiner talks to me. You can't really suck up to the examiner in any way. You can't win points along the way to the, to the examining room, okay? You'll sit down and then you'll do the ID check. This is not assessed, okay? The examiner will say, my name is Jay or Sally or John or whatever their name is. And they'll say, can you tell me your full name, please? And you'll tell them your full name. And then they'll say, what shall I call you? Like for me, I would say, you can call me Jay, right? And then the examiner will say, can you tell me where you're from? And can I see your ID, please? In which case you hand over your passport. Don't forget your passport. As mentioned, all of this is not assessed, okay? After the formalities are over, you'll get into part one, which is small talk, okay? This is where the examiner will ask you personal questions where you'll be talking about your own experience. And this will go for four to five minutes. So let's just look at the basics of part one. So in total, the examiner is going to ask you around 12 questions on three different topics. And I have to say, if Having taken this exam again five times, the topics sort of shift quite suddenly, as you'll see in a minute. And it's a little bit strange, but this is a pretty easy part of the test. The first topic is going to be questions about what you do or where you live. For example, they're going to ask you, do you work or are you a student? And a few other questions related to that or they'll ask you about where you live, in which case you'll talk about your apartment or your house or living with your family or where, whatever your situation is. In the second and third topic, it'll be chosen from a range of different topics like sport or hobbies or shopping or cooking or computers, etc. And the second topic, they might start asking you questions about, I don't know, computers. And then next minute, the examiner will say, do you like the rain? And you think, what, what are you talking about? So they've quickly transitioned from one topic to the next. So just be aware of that and just answer it calmly and say, yes, I really like the rain, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the questions are personal and simple, like do you live in a big city or a small town or did you play sport as a child? Now, before we actually do this, I just want to touch on the E2 methods, which are powerful ways for you to maximize your scores on test day, okay? So in speaking part one, when they ask you one of these simple questions, you do not answer in just one or a few words, okay? You wanna answer in a couple of good sentences. So what you might do is give your opinion. You might provide a detail. You might give a contrast. Well, I like this, some people like that. 
You might compare the past to the present. Well, I used to live in an apartment over there, but now I just recently moved to a part, an apartment here, whatever. You might compare the present to the future. At the moment, I'm living in this apartment, but in a couple of weeks time, I'd like to move to somewhere else. And you're gonna give reasons as well, okay? So just keep these in mind. Let's do it. Okay, uh, who wants to go live? <laughs> oh no, I think we've maxed out the webinar. There's 500 people, hold on. I need to also work out how to do this. So just bear with me. Okay, oh my God. Okay, so I need to click on participants. Um, okay, gotcha, participants. Carmen Lee, let's do it. <gasps> Hold on. Carmen Lee. No, that's the chat. Attendees, gotcha, this part. Okay, now I'm gonna search your name. Sorry, this is the first time I've done this. Allowed to talk. Hello, Carmen, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me, Jay? Yes, I can hear you. How fantastic. Are you ready to answer a few questions? Sure, obviously. Thank you. All right. Let me do the little formality thing first, though, okay? Because the mm -hmm. IELTS examiner says some sort of weird stuff, okay? So let mm -hmm. me start by saying this. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about where you live. Do you live in I a house or an apartment? I live in a studio in Hong Kong, which only uh, about, how big is that? Uh, uh, about 100 square feet, not too big. It's a kitchen together with the living room, everything squeezed together. So it's quite small because the, leaf, uh, the living rents is very high in Hong Kong. So I can't afford to live in a very big place. Good. Probably a little bit too long there, Carmen. I would have stopped after hmm. the first part, but that was good. I'll give you some more feedback in a, in a second. Let's do the second question. Mm. What's your favorite part of your home? The favorite part of my home would be the uh, plethora of activities that we can have in my city because we can choose to have different types of food that we want and we have different types of entertainments such as uh, watching movie in the cinema or uh, watching dramas in the theater. And we have lots of uh, shopping mall in our place. Okay. Um, will you stay there a long time, do you think? I believe that uh, if I have a chance to migrate to other countries, I won't try to stay because there is a, a serious political uh, and social unrest in my location. So if it's possible, I would try to migrate to other country. Okay, terrific. Carmen, I'm going to stop you there. I'll just give you a little bit of feedback. Hold on, I need to work out what's going on. So let me, uh, okay, cool. Let's talk about Carmen's performance there. So Carmen obviously has very good English language skills in terms of pronunciation. Her uh, pronunciation was clear as a bell. I would give you a very high score for that, no doubt. Um, I would also give you a, a high score for grammatical range and accuracy. You were maybe, I think there were a couple of little grammatical issues, but, but really good there. I think where you sort of stumbled was in your fluency, because especially in that first question, you actually came up with quite a complex idea, which was how many square feet your apartment is. And you sort of, you got stuck there and there was quite a bit of effort going on. So I would avoid complex ideas at this stage. Just keep it really simple and basic. The other thing you need to keep in mind is that you can rehearse this, you can practice this, because these questions about where you live or what do you do, uh, the examiners will ask these all the time. So don't try to memorize something because that'll sound awkward and strange, but certainly do a number of different rehearsals on them and then just answer spontaneously on test day. That was cool. Okay, we're gonna shift gears. Um, we're gonna to move to uh, Muhammad Adil. Okay, hold on one second, Muhammad. There you are, terrific. Muhammad, can you hear me? Hello, sir. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to speak with you. It's good to talk to you. What's your first language, Mohammed? Uh, my first language is Urdu. I'm from Pakistan. Gotcha. All right. Very interesting. Okay. Imagine I'm the examiner. I'm now going to shift gears and I'm going to ask you some other questions. Mohammed, right. do, do you ride a bicycle? 
Yes, I do. I'm really a big fan of bicycles. Every day from from school, from home to university, I ride on bicycles. A uh, few days back, you know, I, I I have an accident while while riding a bicycle. But uh, thanks God that I'm safe now, and, and uh, I really love bicycle riding. Okay, good, Muhammad. I'm just going to give you a little tip here. Just try to slow it down a little bit. Okay. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Let's go to the second question. Uh, Muhammad, do you often use public transport? Yes, I'm really uh, into public transport because uh, it is, you know, uh, a very not not expensive, and uh, you don't have to wait for long hours to go on on the uh, public transport. So it is quite comfortable. How could public transport be improved in your country? Yes, it can be improved by providing the facilities to the people near the houses. Like in the downtown, we have no public transport. So the best thing is for the government is to create the road, the roadways that the people can use the public transport more efficiently and they can save a lot of their times. Okay. Thank you, Mohammed. I'll now give Thank you a little bit of feedback. Thank you so much. Hold on one second and said so we're talking. All right, let me give Muhammad a little bit of feedback there. As you heard at the start, Muhammad started off going a thousand miles an hour. And that's really, that's what happens when you get a bit nervous. And on test day, you'll be nervous going blah, 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 blah. You have to try and slow down and be a little bit more, uh, just speak at a moderate pace, okay? Fluency, which is one of the criterion that we saw before, does not mean speaking quickly. It means speaking at a moderate pace and speaking without effort. So overall, Muhammad's fluency was pretty good. There was a little bit of strain there, a little bit of effort. I think the um, in your first question about the bicycle, I think you probably could have stopped and not told me the other bit about the accident. You don't need to go on for too long here. In part three, we'll look at how we actually go into a discussion, okay? But just keep it relatively short, sort of speak for about you know eight, 10 seconds, something like that, couple of sentences, that's enough. And then the examiner will ask you another question. There'll be a chance later on in part three to get into much more um, philosophical, more abstract, better answers, okay? Uh, coherence was quite good. Um, grammatical accuracy, a few little slips there. Um, an article, um, the public transport, for example. Um, there was another one where there was a plural noun where it shouldn't have been a plural noun. These are quite minor. And I wouldn't really worry too much about your accuracy. I'd be focusing more on the pronunciation and clarity of your speech. Your pronunciation is good. There was still a little bit of interference from your first language with particular sounds, um, but cool. Good effort. Oh, by the way, I just want to go back to Carmen before who said the word plethora or plethora. Now, for some reason, there's a YouTube video out there saying that if you use this word, then you will get a high score and it's crazy. That's a crazy idea. You do not have to use the word plethora to get a high score. In fact, if you use that word and it's kind of out of context, it will decrease your score. So just use the vocabulary that is natural to that particular question, okay? All right, that was fun. I enjoyed hearing your, uh, uh, your, your efforts there. That was cool. Okay, while we're at it, and while we've got people on YouTube, you should click that subscribe button because we're going to start doing these live streams uh, more often. We might even start doing writing ones as well. But if you really want to improve your IELTS, check out e2language.com and take one of our prep courses. Okay, let's move on to speaking part two. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is where it starts getting difficult. Even for me as a native speaker and an English language teacher, I find this particular part of the IELTS speaking test challenging to say the least. And this is where we really need a method, which I'll get to in a second. So what is speaking part two? First of all, this is where the examiner will give you a task card, okay? The task card will look like this. Let's just have a look at this task card here. It says, describe a teacher who has impressed you. You should say who he or she is, how you first met him or her, why you were impressed, and explain how you feel about this teacher now. Okay, so everybody will, yes, everybody will be able to talk about some teacher from the past. Okay, 
So let's go through the little task cards. So first of all, there's the context setting statement. Describe a teacher who has impressed you. That's the big idea. Then you've got the dot points, which you should try to uh, address as well. And finally, at the bottom of the task card, there'll be an additional, uh, more open thing to say about it. So on test eight, you're given this task card. You're given one minute to prepare and take notes, which is the fastest one minute you'll ever experience in your life. Then you're asked to speak for up to two minutes on this particular topic. They say between one and two minutes, but you should speak for as long as you possibly can. And if the examiner stops you, and they will at the two minute mark, that's completely fine. Um, each time that I've done the IELTS test, the IELTS examiner has said, okay, please stop, because that means I've reached two minutes. I haven't done anything wrong. I've just spoken for the maximum length. That's it. Okay. So you don't need to stop at one minute 59. Uh, the reason why you want to speak for as long as you can is because you want to show off, okay? You want to show off your grammatical range, your vocabulary, your coherence, and you want to tell a nice story, or as we'll see, a couple or three nice stories. Sometimes the examiner will ask you a follow-up question about this teacher, for example. Okay, so there's a few ways to approach speaking part two, and I highly recommend using these approaches and not going into the exam without a method because it's going to be challenging. So the first method is called PPF, which stands for past, present, future. There's a few different ways to do this. You can tell three separate stories about the past, present and future, or just the past and present, or maybe the present and future, it doesn't matter. This is very flexible, okay? Or version two, you can just include some information from the past, present, or future. So let me tell you what I would do with this um, task card here. First thing that comes to mind is my primary school teacher when I was about eight years old, who was my friend's mum. And she was a fantastic teacher, and I'm still friends with him, and I'm also still friends with her now. So I've got this story there from my past, okay? Now, what I would do is tell that story because it's probably my best story. Um, but then if I feel like I'm running out of time or no, sorry, if I'm running out of ideas, what I'll then do is shift gears and think of another teacher, maybe from the more recent present. For example, I recently did a, an under, a, a postgraduate degree at university, and one of the lecturers there was a fantastic teacher, and he taught me all about language and linguistics, blah, 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 blah. So I'm actually going to tell two stories. Sometimes I might shift and actually tell a future story. Here it doesn't really work because I can't really, I could say, maybe I could just say something at the end, like in the future, I'd really like to study at Stanford University because there's a particular professor there who I'd love to learn from. Now, the reason why we're doing past, present, future, we do this for a few reasons. One is because we don't want to go round and round in circles. We don't want to finish our story in 30 seconds and then just say the same story again. And that happens quite a bit. By telling the three separate stories or two stories, we've got lots of information, lots of language, lots of ideas to work from. Okay. Um, the other reason we're doing it is because we're going to use a range of grammar. Okay. With the past story, we're going to be drawing on past tense verbs. I had a teacher, she was fantastic, etc. Then with the present, I'm gonna tell a more present story. Recently, it's still gonna be the past tense, but I could say, um, I have been attending a class at university. Present perfect continuous, okay? And maybe if I slip into a future story, I'm gonna start using future verbs, simple future or going to, or even modals, would or could or might, okay? This, will, this grammatical range will naturally happen as you tell the different stories from the different times. Now, I know some of you are going to say, but Jay, it says describe a teacher, one teacher who has impressed you from the past. The answer to that is, we saw this speaking criteria before, how you're scored, and you are not scored about speaking on topic, okay? You have to speak loosely about this particular topic, but you are absolutely free 
to go slightly off topic or talk about two teachers or whatever, you will not be penalized for that. And if your IELTS examiner says anything during the role play, make a note of it and make an official complaint because the examiner is wrong. I've heard some examiners do this, so and they actually don't know. Cool. Now, if you're not comfortable with PPF or it doesn't quite work for you or for whatever reason you're struggling with that, you can use the traditional method. The traditional method for answering this question starts uh, works like this. You start with a short introduction. So you might say something like, okay, I would like to tell you a, about a teacher that I had when I was eight years old, who is now one of my good friends, okay? Um, you could also bring in some of the dot points there. She was my, um, one of my friend's mothers. I met her at a small local primary school and she has impressed upon me greatly, something like that, okay? Then you start going through the dot points in more detail. I find this one difficult. Maybe you like it. One of the things you need to do is decide which of these methods you like. And please choose now because we're about to do some practice. Maybe let's just all start with the PPF method, okay? And maybe for the second one, up to you. Anyway, you can uh, decide. Okay, ready? This time we're gonna practice by ourselves. Then we're gonna do it again and I'm gonna get some participants from the audience to do it. So you have one minute to prepare. You can take notes. I didn't mention that, you can take notes. I recommend taking very simple notes, like a few dot points max, that's it. You have one minute to prepare. I'm going to disappear. And then I want you to speak for two minutes. Okay, here's your one minute preparation time starts now. Okay, you can begin speaking.
Okay, how is that for you? Um, as I said, this is an extremely challenging thing to do, to speak for two minutes without conversing with somebody, or I, I don't know, I find this very difficult. Hopefully one of those methods uh, helped you to speak for up to two minutes, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go live again, and we're gonna do the exact same task card. So let me share the screen just so you can see it in front of you. Um, let me get this right. I'm going to click on participants. I'm going to click on attendees. I'm going to see who, uh, wait, I'm going to go to the chat. Lots of people. Oh, Novianti. All right, let's do Novianti. Novianti. There you are. Allowed to talk. Hello, Novianti. Can you hear me? I think you have to unmute your microphone. There you are. Yes, hello. I can hear you. Yeah, hello. Hello. Where are you, Novianti? Uh, right now, I live in Jakarta, in, in Indonesia. <laughs> oh, dari, dari Indonesia. Bagaimana di situ? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, di sini baik. Di sini baik. <laughs> it's fine here. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, Novianti, are you ready to do this? Just have a go, and then I'm going to give you some feedback, okay? Okay. All right, so ready? We'll start in three, two, one, go. Okay, today I would like to tell you about my unpleasant trip uh, in France. Um, I was there with my Dutch boyfriend. Uh, we went to Paris for a first time. I think it was two years ago. And it's a little bit not nice because uh, we organized this trip together with... Um, tourism organizer, but once we arrived at the, the, at the airport, the organizer seemed didn't uh, meet us. Um, I didn't, didn't know why, but, and then after that, um, we decided to call that tourism organizer and then we asked our money back. And yeah, once in the blue moon, so we just took another plan to another city and then it went very well. Um, um, yes, if, if we didn't go to another city, I think we wouldn't find any beautiful places there. Uh, we saw a lot of nice places and it was really nice weather because we went there in the winter season. So we had a chance to make a snowman. Um, yeah, I think it's a fascinating trip at the end. All right, should I stop you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, well done. Um, congratulations. You're very, very brave to, to do this. So, so I applaud you. Well done. That's fantastic. Cool. All right. How was that for you, Novianti? What, what do you think happened there? Um, do you think it was a good performance? Are you happy with your performance? Do you think you could improve? And if so, how? Um, yeah, sometimes I got stuck with another idea, but yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think the problem here for nearly everybody is, is not so, well, for some people, it's a language issue. For you, I don't think it's so much of a language issue. It felt to me like it was an idea issue. You sort of felt like you're running out of ideas. And yes, it's true. Is that true? <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is, this, is why, this is why I like to switch gears and tell another story because you kind of exhaust the first story and then you're like, oh my God, this, what else am I going to say about this story? <laughs> Then you sort of think, okay, I've got this other story. So what I do in my preparation time, Novianti, is on my little task card, I write the, the past story, you know, the, the trip with your boyfriend or whatever it was. And mm -hmm. then I write what's a more recent journey that, um, that you took, which was unpleasant or whatever. And you write that one down, okay? So okay. then you'll have two and you'll be able to shift gears because then when you start to run out of ideas of the first story, you simply talk about the second story and you'll be fresh of full of different ideas, you'll be in a different country, a different place, whatever's going on. Um, okay. Cool. All right. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just um, disable you from talking there. Cool. So that was great. Thank you again, Novianti. Just a few things on language there. 
Um, first of all, Novianti had uh, a good vocabulary range, lots of different words we used, including the word snowman, which I particularly liked. Um, Novianti's vocab was precise. I didn't hear any words that sounded strange or didn't make sense. So good vocabulary precision. Um, grammatically was fine, but the issue there really was one of fluency and hesitation. Again, because Novianti was lacking ideas and if there's no ideas, there's gonna be no language, okay? So I wanna do this one again. So let me go back. Who wants to try and who wants to try with um, Teresa? Let's try Teresa. Hello, Teresa. I think you might be on mute there. Um, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. That's, that's good. Where are you from? I am from the Philippines. Oh, fantastic. Okay, terrific. Do you want to have a go at this, Teresa? Uh, sure, let's give it a try. Good on you. I'll give you two minutes. Your time starts now. Um, a particular trip that I got very disappointed with was, I think it was around March 2020, last year, before the pandemic uh, has started. My friend and I were supposed to go, were supposed to go to Japan, but eventually um, the worldwide news of COVID-19 has becoming um, ubiquitous and it seems like the chances for travel are not that successful. So um, we were quite disappointed since we have already booked our flight to Japan um, a few months ago. Um, then uh, I was traveling with my very close friend and we really got disappointed because uh, one week prior to our flight, uh, we received an email from the agency that um, there are no flights that will be allowed starting March 2020 and um, we got really devastated but at that time we had no choice but to comply since uh, we do not have um, uh, any choice like what I've said since we do not want to um, acquire the virus so but now um, since uh, in the Philippines the uh, cases have been uh, low since com in comparison to last year. Um, we have booked for another trip to the same country, Japan, uh, with my friend, and we're going there this December uh, 2021. I'm really excited. That was a lovely little conclusion. I like that. I'm really excited. It's a nice, nice way to finish. Thank you. All right. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about your performance? You happy? Do you think you could improve? What do you think? Um, I think uh, I had a few ideas, but uh, I think I also used the past and future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. I think okay. I need a little bit of words. Nice, nice, nice. You did because you talked about a new future plan. So you did shift gears from past tense verbs to future tense, which is terrific. I also Thank felt you. like... Sorry, I also felt like um, uh, your story is very detailed. You actually have a great memory. You seem to remember dates and everything. Um, did you make yes. that up or did you actually remember that? No, it was actually um, a, a plan of ours. But the, main, the real reason behind it was that my parents didn't allow me. <laughs> and at the same time, the COVID has started. So, gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Interesting. Because one of the things that you are free to do in part two is of course make stuff up you don't have to tell yes. the truth you can uh, fabricate a story you can embellish you can you can lie it doesn't matter it's a test of your english it's not a test of your honesty so feel free to th whatever comes into your mind the other thing that might happen on test day is you might get a task card where you really just i can't really think of a journey that I went on that didn't go as planned, which is gonna be challenging. You have to speak about this particular task. So you just make something up and just use your imagination. Yes, thank cool. you, Jay. Thank you very much for participating. That's very brave of you.
Okay, whoops, sorry, press the wrong button. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, Zoom. Having a little Zoom thing here. Uh, I'm just gonna leave you there for a second because I can't seem to disable you. But, um, okay, let's push on. There we go, got it. Nope, hold on one second. Participants, there you are. Teresa. Aha, gotcha, cool. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so let's just check this speaking criteria one more time. So what we're aiming to do is to be fluent and coherent. That is, we wanna speak without too much effort. And as we saw before, if you're lacking ideas, then the language isn't gonna come and you're gonna strain and it's gonna be with effort, okay? So you wanna have lots of ideas there, have a second story there just in case. Now, one of the things that probably most people didn't do there was use connecting words. So first of all, what happened in our trip was we did this, this, and this. After that, what happened was blah, 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 blah. Subsequently, try to use some of these discourse markers to give your story a better structure, okay? So just try and slot these in. Try to segment your story. So when, for example, you shifted your story from talking about what happened to your future plan, maybe you could indicate that somehow or signpost that. Now that I've talked about what's, what happened, I'll talk now about the future, what we plan to do. So just tell the examiner. You're basically telling the examiner how you're telling the story. Um, you need to develop the topics fully. There's vocabulary range, vocab precision, same with grammatical range, grammatical accuracy and pronunciation. Your pronunciation was super clear. Uh, most uh, Filipinos pronunciation is very good. Let's keep going. Let's do some more. This is fun. Let's do another one. Okay. This time we're going to describe a useful course that you did recently, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna disappear. You have one minute to prepare and then two minutes to speak. Okay, you can begin speaking.
Okie dokie. <laughs> it's tough. You need to practice this. And I really do encourage you to use the method. I'm going to skip through this because we're running a little bit behind time. What we're going to do now is shift to part three. And this is a discussion. And the discussion follows on from part two. So if you were talking about a journey in part two, you would then start a more philosophical, deeper discussion in part three about journeys or transport or travel or something like that. So we're going to continue the discussion now about education. Okay. So you'll get a few questions. It depends on how long you spoke for in part two, maybe three, maybe five, maybe eight questions related to that particular task card. It's not an IQ test, it's a language test. So just make stuff up, it doesn't matter. You're not judged on the quality of your ideas, you're judged on the quality of your language. It's going to be more abstract. It's not personal this time. This time you're talking about concepts, ideas, philosophies, whatever. You're not talking about you so much, okay? And in doing that, you're going to use more complex language. We're going to touch on the same method about giving an opinion, details, contrast, comparing, or reasons. Let's do it. Oh, I'm not allowed to show you those. Okay, let's go Valentine, Valentine, Valentine. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, how do I do this again? V for Valentine. Here you go. Hello, Valentine. Can you hear me? Hi, good day, Jay. I can hear you clearly. Fantastic. Where are you from? I'm from Nigeria, Lagos State. Oh, fantastic. We've got a nice mix of students here. Okay, you ready? I'm going to ask you some questions. You have to give me some nice, uh, deep answers, okay? So we're carrying on from the education topic. So Valentine, what qualities does a good student have, do you think? Oh, well, a good student should have possess some um, very deep qualities. Uh, you should be able to hear things, listen properly, give valid answers. You should be able to think on your feet, like speedy processing, um, not wasting too much time hitting the nail on the head, giving valid points, and no, taking too much time is really important as well. Doing good. the right things. What makes a good teacher? Okay, interesting question. Uh, the ability to uh, maximize, maximize time. You could have um, things to do in 30 minutes and in in 10 minutes, you're passing your message and the class is like coming along with you. You're not gallivanting, not beating around the bush. You're passing your messages directly, giving valid examples. Has teaching changed much in your lifetime? Well, not particularly. Uh, my parts of worst day, my side, teaching is... Um, well, with the growth of science and technology, it has really helped, quite honestly. So um, I'll say, to some certain extent, yes, it has changed. It has changed, quite right. Do you think computers or artificial intelligence will one day replace teachers? Or well, like I said earlier, with the growth of um, technology, there's a possibility that that might happen. Take, for example, the COVID-19 period we had um, robots attending to patients, serving them foods and all that. They replaced the individuals at that point in time. So with the look of things, it's, there's a very large possibility that that might happen. But then at the end of the day, it can replace the human brain, I must say. Valentine, do you think that children and adults learn differently? Well, yes, I do. Reason being, um, where the children we're having these days are quite much more smarter than we adults. They have a more, uh, what's the word? They have a, a more expansive brain, if there's anything like as such. I mean, you have a child of a year plus or even younger speaking. And back then, while we were growing up, I mean, you, you might not be able to pronounce a certain word until you're like, two years old, but you have a child of six, eight months, same things at this present age. So the level of learning right now is diversifying. 
do you think online learning is as effective as face-to-face -face learning? Well, yes, online learning is as effective. I, I beg to agree, because um, going back to the corona period as well, a lot of people had to resort to um, learning online. Schools were closed down. Teachers had to communicate with their students, one of them on via social media and this Zoom, for example. And uh, it is as effect effective because um, we had people doing practicals. I had friends that I stay with attending practical classes online, uh, taking assignments, doing presentation, doing their project defenses. And as well, so um, yes, I, I see, yeah, it is as effective as face-to-face, -face, but then there's much more fun when there's a face-to-face -face class. Because when you're taking online classes, that is like the disadvantage. There's a larger number of people like we have here right now. Okay, I'll, I'll stop you there. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Cool. Well done, first of all. Um, your command of English is, is, is really good. You're a, you're a great student to, to listen to, and I imagine you'd be a good person to have a conversation with. And that's kind of what you Thank have you to do much. here. You have to kind of be interesting. You know, think of interesting ideas and say interesting things and use interesting language to convey those ideas. And you did that really well. So your fluency was nice. You had a nice tempo. You didn't seem to be struggling or hesitating with the language. It seemed to flow quite nicely. I have to give you a very high score for vocabulary. Um, not just because you said individual words correctly, but you, had, you, you spoke in wonderful little phrases. Okay, so valid point, think on your feet. I tend to disagree. You had these wonderful, what are called collocations or natural sounding phrases. So I would certainly give you a, a high score there for vocabulary. Um, your grammar Thank was, you very much. was really good. Your, now, here's an interesting thing with pronunciation. You have a, a strong accent, not a thick accent though. So or you met, like I, I could understand you fine. I understand that you have a, I could hear your accent but it didn't impede my understanding of what you were saying. So your accent is not an impediment. It's fine. But one thing people will have to be careful of is when their accent actually influences or impedes the English sounds. And therefore it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to understand as the examiner. So overall, um, yeah, really well done. I, I think you spoke for a good length of time for each question. Don't speak for too long, just, you know, punch out some good ideas and then stop. You don't have to keep speaking like part two and then wait for the examiner to ask you the next question. All right. Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Terrific. Cool. All right. Uh, it's just about time for me to finish this, but this has been super fun. I really liked it. I'm definitely going to do this again. And I really want you to click that subscribe button there. So the next one that I do, you'll be well aware of it. But if you really want to be aware of what's going on with IELTS preparation, you need to come across to e2language.com. You can sign up for free and all of your preparation needs will be taken care of there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think that's all from me. Um, there's a live class starting at E2 Language right now in two minutes. It's a grammar clinic for IELTS with Murray Claire. I highly recommend you check that one out if you need some help with your grammar. One thing I will do just before I go is this. Uh, we talked a little bit about pronunciation then. And what I want to do is just share with you something. Um, we've just released this new website called e2school.com. And on this website, not E2 Language, this is a different one. This website is for general English language skills, including a pronunciation course that will help you with the clarity of your speech. It's a ripper. There's also a free grammar course. There's a placement test. There's general English level one, two, three, four, and five. There's even a spelling course on there. So do check that out. Cool bananas. Thanks very much. I thought that was great fun. Hopefully I'll see you next time.